Under the cover of darkness in Los Angeles, Lewis illicitly enters a train yard and begins severing a section of chain link fencing. As a beam of light begins to approach, he swiftly conceals his equipment just before a security guard appears and requests identification. Approaching as if to comply, Louis instead ambushes the guard, rendering him unconscious and pilfering his watch. Later, at a scrapyard, Lewis haggles with the foreman for a while before finally selling the stolen fencing. He then inquires about job availability, lavishing his inquiry with elaborate business jargon. However, the foreman curtly refuses the offer. Persisting, Louis proposes to work as an unpaid intern for the sake of gaining experience. But the foreman dismisses the idea, revealing his awareness of the fencing's dubious origin, and thus labeling Louis as a thief. Are you new to this channel? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And before we continue, also like the video. While driving, Louis notices several police cars pass by and decides to pull over to investigate the commotion. He discovers that there has been an accident and a car is now engulfed in flames with people trapped inside. At that moment, Joe and his colleague arrive to document the scene, and Lewis observes with keen interest. Once they finish, Lewis inquires about Joe's profession, and Joe explains that he is a stringer, someone who rushes to the scenes of crimes or accidents to capture footage, which he then sells to the highest bidding news outlet. A stringer only requires a camera and a police scanner for the job. Intrigued, Lewis asks if there are any job openings, but Joe informs him that there are not. Upon witnessing the crash on television the following day, Lewis's resolve to enter the industry strengthens. He heads to the shoreline and bides his time until he can purloin a bicycle from an inattentive beachgoer. Subsequently, he attempts to convert the stolen bicycle into cash at a pawn shop. However, the proprietor of the pawn shop stands firm on the price, impervious to Lewis's persistent haggling. Opting for an alternative, Lewis proposes to trade the bike for credit within the shop. This exchange ultimately garners him a new video camera and a police scanner. During the evening, he employs the scanner to monitor local broadcasts. Quickly realizing his unfamiliarity with the jargon and the necessity of devising a swift path to the scenes. Upon reaching his initial destination, a routine detention, the police briskly turn him away. He then attempts to capture footage of a woman detained for impaired driving, but the officers expedite his departure once more. Ultimately, he arrives at a violent carjacking incident where he manages to film some intensely graphic content. This action provokes a police officer who forcefully ejects both Lewis and a competing freelancer, who also vents his frustration at Lewis for interrupting his work. Disregarding the confrontation, Lewis trails him to eavesdrop on his phone exchange, aiming to glean insights into negotiating with news outlets and determining appropriate fees for his material. Subsequently, Lewis presents his recorded video to Nina, the news director at Channel 6, who is instantly taken aback by his ability to capture such raw footage. Nina beckons the producer, Frank, to take a look, but he panics, protesting that the morning show can't broadcast such disturbing visuals. Unfazed, Nina suggests they can proceed it with a viewer discretion advisory, quickly asserting her authority to resolve the matter and agreeing to purchase the video. During the negotiation, Louis does his best to strike a favorable deal, but ultimately he secures less payment than he initially aimed for. Nevertheless, Nina acknowledges his talent, advising him that with improved video quality, via a better camera, he could go far. Spotting an opportunity for future collaborations, Lewis inquires about what content garners the highest viewership. Nina reveals that their audience has a morbid curiosity for coverage of gruesome mishaps and violent crime, especially in affluent neighborhoods predominantly inhabited by white residents. Upon waking the following day, Lewis observes the television broadcasting his recorded material, instilling a sense of accomplishment within him. He transfers the television segment onto his laptop and delves into researching an assortment of emergency service codes on the web, committing their significance to memory. Subsequently, Louis convenes with a youthful individual named Rick to conduct a job interview. Throughout the interview, he uses an array of business jargon to query and coax Rick into divulging personal details, yet ultimately decides to employ him owing to Rick's possession of a mobile phone, his familiarity with the locality, and his adeptness in navigating with GPS. Lewis discloses the position as an unpaid training opportunity, which prompts objections from Rick, citing his urgent need for compensation due to his precarious housing situation. Following an extended negotiation, Louis concedes to remunerate Rick with a nightly sum of $30. As dusk falls, Louis and Rick are parked with the police scanner on, using the downtime for an impromptu lesson on deciphering dispatch codes. For hours, the radio crackles with mundane reports until a call about a blaze sparks action, and they speed off. Rick is tasked with plotting the quickest path via the GPS, but Lewis's reckless driving and shouts rattle him, 
leading to misguided directions. Tension mounts, and they reach the incident too late. The casualty has already been taken by the EMTs. Chided by Joe for their delay, Lewis's irritation boils over, demanding sharper teamwork from Rick, who pleads for more time to navigate without pressure. Upon receiving their next promising tip, Louis maintains his composure and refrains from berating Rick, which helps them to make it to the scene just in time. Unfortunately, by the time they arrive, the police have already sealed off the burglarized home, leaving nothing of interest to capture on camera. Determined not to leave empty-handed, Lewis bides his time until the police are preoccupied. He then slips into the house and discovers bullet impacts in the kitchen. He deliberately positions the fridge magnets around the bullet marks to amplify the sense of tragedy and completes his recording with a shot of the punctured window, framing the dialogue between the victims and police. Before exiting, Lewis pilfers some discarded mail as a means to obtain the victim's identities. Shortly thereafter, Louis presents the footage to Nina, who is thoroughly impressed with the material. While Frank is appalled by the evident break-in and the unethical acquisition of the names through personal mail, Nina opts to air the footage despite the dubious methods employed. Henceforth, Lewis and Rick excel in unearthing compelling stories and capturing them on video to ultimately market to Nina. Rick strategizes the most efficient routes for Lewis to swiftly reach each incident, while Lewis tenaciously documents every stark reality, skillfully evading law enforcement. With a keen interest, he views his footage on television and methodically archives the segments on his computer. Accumulating sufficient funds, he upgrades to a superior camera for his personal use and procures another for Rick, enabling simultaneous filming from multiple perspectives. On one occasion, they arrived at the scene of a vehicular accident ahead of law enforcement. Lewis attempted to gather a statement from one of the motorists who rebuffed him with profanities while frantically trying to communicate with emergency services. Subsequently, Lewis surveyed the wreckage, and upon discovering the second motorist lifeless in a shadowy area, he proceeded to reposition the corpse to a better lit location by the car's headlights for an optimal capture. He filmed the scene avidly until the arrival of the police, who then instructed him to leave. Witnessing the situation, Joe acknowledged that he had been bested this time. Afterward, when Lewis presented the footage to Nina, she pointed out the presence of blood on his arm, which he disregarded and instead invited her to dinner. Initially, Nina declined, wanting to maintain their work rapport, but Lewis insinuated that their steady flow of footage would cease if she refused, compelling her to agree reluctantly. The following day, Joe encountered Lewis and shared his ambition to expand his team by adding a fleet of vans and invited Lewis to become part of his growth. However, Lewis declined the offer, and when Joe persisted, Lewis warned him with the threat of physical harm. Enraged, Joe stormed off, muttering resentments against Lewis. As the weekend arrived, Lewis enjoyed dinner at a restaurant with Nina, during which he confessed his desire for a romantic relationship with her. Nina rejected his advances, attributing their interactions to mere professional obligations. Undeterred, Louis presented extensive research data, highlighting that it was his footage that had attracted thousands of new viewers to her lowest-rated station. With Nina's job prospects on the line and her contract nearing its conclusion, he made it clear that her job security depended on accepting his proposition. Faced with this ultimatum, Nina felt compelled to spend weekends with Lewis in intimate encounters, ensuring that he would distribute his exclusive videos to her alone. Later on, Rick commits yet another navigation error, leading to Lewis missing the night's major event. Joe and his crew scoop up all the exclusive scenes, leaving Louis the butt of Joe's jokes. At night's conclusion, Lewis delivers Nina a collection of minor offenses on tape. Frustrated by the prospect of the competing network's lead with the significant story, Nina lashes out, worried about her boss's impending wrath and feeling her personal sacrifices for Lewis have been in vain. The subsequent morning finds Louis witnessing Joe's coverage on the opposing network, which enrages him to the point of shattering his bathroom mirror. Consumed by the desire for retaliation, he clandestinely enters Joe's abode with the intent to tamper with his van. That evening, as they arrived on the scene, Lewis and Rick were just in time to capture footage of a vehicular accident. To their shock, the vehicle involved was Joe's van. He had sustained significant injuries and was being loaded into an ambulance for urgent care. Rick felt it was unethical to film a colleague in distress, considering Joe a part of their community. Yet Lewis, undeterred by the concerns of morality, proceeded to record the incident. As Lewis moved in with his camera, Joe's anger was palpable, even as he struggled, gasping through the blood that impeded his breath. Several evenings later, Louis and Rick managed to arrive at a grand residence, the site of a recent break-in, just ahead of the police. Quietly entering, Louis spots the culprits escaping and stealthily conceals himself among shrubbery to capture their faces and the license plate of their van on camera. 
Subsequently, Lewis ventures into the mansion and meticulously documents each bloodstain on the floor, tracing the path to discover the location of the unfortunate victims. He methodically records each of them, ensuring every body is captured on film. In a provocative move, he includes footage of an empty crib, insinuating a tragic outcome that may not exist. Upon finding the final victim and seeing signs of life, Lewis, rather than offering aid, films the man before fleeing the premises with Rick, moments before law enforcement appear. After driving just a few blocks, they halt the vehicle, allowing Lewis to swiftly edit the perpetrators and the still-living victim from the recorded material. Shortly after completing the edit, he presents the footage to Nina, who is thoroughly impressed with his work. As is typical, Frank's reaction is one of panic, prompting Nina to consult with the television station's attorney to confirm the legality of their actions. The attorney counsels that they are treading a fine line, but reassures them that as long as the location remains undisclosed and the victim's faces are obscured, their actions should be permissible. Subsequently, Louis demands $15,000 in exchange for the video material. Upon Nina's refusal to meet his price, he loses his composure. Emphasizing his leverage in the situation, he insists that moving forward, she is to comply with his pricing demands without objection. He stipulates that the news anchors must acknowledge his company, Video Production News, on air, and that Nina should introduce him to her colleagues, enabling him to forge professional relationships. With apprehension, Nina finds herself with no choice but to consent. As the moment to broadcast arrives, Lewis remains on site, observing contentedly as the news presenters refer to his business during the segment. The presenters must also give a detailed account of the criminal incident, and Nina prompts them to render the description increasingly sensational, vivid, and designed to incite fear. Upon transitioning to a commercial break, Nina receives a call from her supervisor offering congratulations and requesting a meeting with Lewis. The following day, upon sunrise, Detective Fronteri and her colleague arrived at Lewis' residence seeking to interrogate him. Louis concocted a tale, claiming that he was drawn to the scene by the sound of gunfire with the intention of rendering aid. However, upon realizing he was too late, he resorted to filming the aftermath. He recalled witnessing a van speeding off, though he was unable to identify the perpetrators. The detectives remained skeptical of his account, but lacking further recourse, they eventually departed. Subsequently, Lewis conducts an online search for the vehicle registration number and retrieves the residential address of one of the offenders. Accompanied by Rick, he proceeds to the specified location and they stake out the property, awaiting the felon's departure. As the suspect's van appears, a curious Rick questions why Lewis refrains from alerting the police at this juncture. Louis articulates his strategy to let the wrongdoers proceed to a more upscale area, anticipating they will put up resistance during the arrest, thereby producing a more compelling story. The unfolding situation unnerves Rick, who deems it exceedingly perilous and insists on a salary increment. Lewis encourages Rick to state his price, to which he tentatively proposes $75 per night. Lewis promptly agrees, which leads Rick to the sudden realization that he could have negotiated a higher sum. Despite Rick's attempt to renegotiate, Louis shuts down the conversation, affirming that the opportunity for discussion has passed. Once the offender exits the residence, the pair tails him and observes as he collects his accomplice. They maintain their pursuit of the duo until their arrival at a quick service eatery. At that point, Louis contacts law enforcement, provides thorough physical characteristics, alerts them to the pair's armed status, and identifies them as the notorious suspects from the well-known crime. He also gives his identity as the discoverer of their whereabouts. Upon ending the call with Louis, it dawns on Rick that Louis will likely claim the police reward for capturing these individuals. Seizing the opportunity, Rick demands a 50% share. Though infuriated by the proposition, Louis concedes to the payment, recognizing the necessity of an additional camera to capture supplementary perspectives. With the agreement in place, Rick positions himself opposite the restaurant. Shortly, the police arrive, and as they near the offenders, gunfire erupts, escalating into a deadly exchange that results in multiple fatalities. Amidst the chaos, Louis and Rick capture the entire incident on camera, including the moment one perpetrator is fatally shot and another sustains injuries yet manages to flee in his van. The police waste no time in pursuit, with Louis hastily collecting Rick to tail the high-speed chase. In a frenetic dash, Louis navigates the vehicle erratically, all the while urging Rick to keep the camera rolling. The pursuit escalates wildly, culminating in an unrelated vehicle colliding with a police car, effectively removing it from the chase. The remaining police officers doggedly continue their pursuit as the fugitive begins to aggressively target their vehicle with his van, leading to a collision that results in both the police and the criminal crashing. Upon spotting the bodies, Lewis quickly moves in to capture the scene on camera, 
declaring that the perpetrator is among the dead. He summons Rick to document the horrid details, hoping Rick might learn something from the experience. However, as Rick approaches, the presumed dead assailant regains consciousness and fatally shoots Rick. Lewis, seemingly anticipating this turn of events, doesn't flinch and keeps filming. The criminal attempts to flee the vehicle, but is stopped in his tracks by the swift arrival of the police, who incapacitate him with gunfire. Louis then tends to Rick, his camera documenting every moment, which leads Rick to the chilling realization that Lewis had foreseen the criminal's feigned death and had exploited the situation for a sensational story. Displaying a stark lack of empathy, Lewis takes possession of Rick's camera following his passing. Subsequently, Lewis delivers the collected video content to Nina, whose excitement is evident at the sight of the grim scenes. Just as the broadcast is set to begin, Frank notifies her that an undisclosed yet credible informant has revealed the violence at the residence wasn't the result of random hoodlums. Rather, the victims were connected to organized crime and had illicit drugs in their possession. Despite this, Nina decides against incorporating this information into their report, arguing that the narrative of everyday tragedy is more compelling for their audience. Frank remarks that Nina's perspective echoes that of Lewis, which she receives as praise, acknowledging that Lewis has stirred them to aspire for greater achievements. Later on, Detective Frontieri shows up at the studio, insisting on seizing the video material, claiming it's critical evidence. Nina, however, stands her ground and demands a legal warrant before she would consider releasing any footage. Consequently, Frontieri brings Louis in for questioning, but he remains unfazed and adheres to his original account. Though visibly frustrated, Frontieri accuses him of engaging in unethical and reckless journalistic tactics. She is compelled to release him due to a lack of concrete evidence. Several evenings on, Louis secures a pair of vans emblazoned with the insignia of a video production news company and brings on board three interns. He informs them that while they won't receive financial compensation, he pledges not to ask of them anything he wouldn't do himself. Afterward, they set off together in pursuit of the latest news story. That concludes this video. If you found enjoyment in it, please leave a like and remember to subscribe. Also, tap the notification bell to be among the first to view our upcoming videos. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one.